everybody, Sean here from s and Designs, and today I'm going to be walking you through building the Battle of New York Captain America cowl. So first, let's start by taking a look at the patterns and the materials. So when you get one of my patterns, you'll notice that I always render out the finished piece at the top. So what you want to do is save these after you've printed it out, because it's going to show you where all the seam lines go, how everything fits together, and uh, like where your zippers are going to be placed, and, and all the edges. Uh, also, you'll notice that in the upper left-hand corner of the pattern itself, I'll print any like specific details that you need for how to put together certain parts. Like here, I've outlined that side detail Y-shaped piece. So now let's take a look at the pattern pieces themselves. Uh, we'll start out by taking a look at the back. So you've got um, your markings, you can see the center back and the top of the head there. There's also some marks towards the bottom where the side lines up. And then this line up here is going to be the top of the forehead. So here's the side of the top, and you'll notice there's a dart there, and that dart helps to make the, the curve over the top of the head, as well as your front face. So when you put this together, those two edges are going to line up. Next we'll look at the middle side. And it's hard to see in the video, but there are some red lines, and those are placement lines for that Y-shaped side detail. This piece is going to line up to the bottom of that upper part and connect in, just like that. Next we'll look at the lower side. You'll see the back and the front markings, and the top marking where it goes to the middle. So those two pieces are going to go together just like that. And then when it's ready to be put together, you'll see those notches match up, and the dot on the back matches up to the seam line. And this is the front. This front edge is cut on the fold of the fabric so it's seamless across the center front. And you'll see those same registration marks at the bottom there where that side matches up. You can also see how all of the edges in the corners line up, as well as how that upper side piece is gonna get matched up and sewn in. So when it's finished, that whole edge all the way around is gonna be your face opening. The last piece we're going to talk about is that Y-shaped side detail piece. Now I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how to put this together later on, but what you're going to do is cut it out of foam, and then you're going to spray it, and you're going to, you're going to actually wrap this in material so that all of these edges are nice and clean, and then you can stitch it down. It's also marked for the front and the back, which direction it goes, but you can see that point will always go in the front at the bottom. Also, it's going to match up to the front face and then it's going to match up to the seam allowance in the back. So there's all the pattern pieces laid out and it's time to get started. All right, so now let's take a look at the fabrics we're going to be using. Uh, we've got three main fabrics. The first one is a black uh, two-way stretch jumbo spandex. Um, we've also got a navy blue medium weight Ponte de Roma, which is basically a double knit and we've got a bullet nylon stretch which is um, got a nice texture on one side and is flat on the other side. Now those are the two face fabrics. The black is going to be your foundation fabric. Since the, since the two blues are a little bit lighter in weight I want to make sure that I give them nice definition. So we're going to be layering this together with our trusty Super 77. So on the shiny side of the jumbo we're going to spray that with Super 77 after we cut the pieces out and then simply lay it down on the other fabrics and adhere them together. Now let's take a look at that side detail piece. The first thing you're going to do with this is you're going to cut it out of two millimeter EVA foam. Then you're going to spray the whole thing and lay it down to the back side of that bullet stretch nylon. Now when you lay it down you're going to cut out the bullet uh, with about a half an inch seam allowance, just enough that you can wrap around then you're gonna spray the whole back of the piece and then just wrap that excess fabric around the edges. Notice that you're gonna leave uh, the ends of the Y open because that front edge is gonna line up to the face and that back edge is gonna go into the seam allowance. Uh, you'll also notice that I've marked two dots on the back, one dot on the front, but if you forget to mark it or you're not sure, just remember that lower point always goes towards the front and there's the finished piece, all put together. Also, you'll see that 
it'll stay a little bit tacky from that spray mount on the back side. That'll help you when you're pushing it down onto the side piece to keep it from shifting around while you're sewing it. All right, now let's talk about construction. So to start putting this piece together, uh, where you wanna begin is by sewing those lower side pieces onto the middle side pieces. So just line up the front and the back edges and you've got the registration notches from the pattern that'll help you with the center part. And then you're just gonna sew those together, easing those curves together. So once you're done, you'll see you've got a nice seam line, but you wanna take some of the bulk out of this so what I do is I'll just very carefully go through with my thumbnail and I'll um, delaminate that jumbo spandex from the fabric facing. You don't wanna cut all the way through the fabric on the seam line, only the backing fabric because you don't want to compromise the strength of the seam. So once you've trimmed out that excess bulk in there, you can go back to the front and just give it a nice edge stitch all the way along. so that you've got your nice top stitched detail. And then trim the seam allowance out from the back. Again, just gives you nicer curves and takes some of the bulk out of the finished piece. And there you go. The next piece that goes on is that center front piece. Now you'll notice that I've pre-clipped where the corners are so that makes it easier to sew around with those pre-clipped. You can try clipping it while you're sewing, but I just think it's easier to do it ahead of time. That way you're not trying to wedge your scissors into the, in under the needle. So once again, you're just gonna line up your bottom edges. Make sure that you're lining up where your notch is gonna go. And all of those markings can be made from the pattern piece. That's why I've drawn in the seam allowances. And then just sew that up. So the reason we're putting the front on at this point is that the seam uh, from the front and the side actually is crossed over when you put that upper side piece on and you'll see what that looks like in just a couple of minutes. But this is the piece that, uh, that you need to put it on so you're not having to break up a seam later. And then you just work those edges in, starting from the end, sew it up to that pivot point, you drop the needle, raise the presser foot, and then pivot, and then you're going to sew back down to connect up your entire seam. And there it is. So when you open this up, you can see you've got those nice angled seams. Now you're gonna go back and you're gonna trim that excess fabric out just like you did before. And give it that nice edge stitch detail. And then when you're done, once again, go back in and trim all of that excess seam allowance out of the inside <clears throat> to make it less bulky and easier to wear. Then the other side is done exactly the same way. And that's trimmed out and cleaned up. and there's the front attached to the sides. Now you're gonna go in and do those upper side pieces. 
which form the temples. So remember that dart we were looking at earlier? Now you're gonna go back in and you're gonna sew that dart up first. And then after you stitch that so you can get the bulk out, just take your small snips and go from the, the fold of the dart and just snip down so that you can go in and separate that excess material. And then my hand is covering it a little bit, but you just trim that out, same as you have before. And give it your edge stitch to give it a nice clean finish. And once again, you can go in and trim that excess out. There, nice shaped dart. So now it's time to sew that in. <clears throat> and you're gonna, again, pre-clip those edges. And then you can see that, where that lines up at the base point. We talked about that during the patterns. That lines up. And while you're stitching this, you're gonna cross over that seam that you just stitched, matching up your notches and your points. Drop the needle, pivot, match up your notch and your point. Go along that bottom edge, and once again, drop the needle, pivot, match up your edges, and then finish that seam up. And there, you've got your upper part sewn in. So at this point, you're gonna trim out all that excess and you're gonna do your nice top stitch and then you're gonna sew the other side on exactly the same way. and there's your front and your sides are complete. Now it's time to add those Y-shaped detail pieces on the sides. So the first thing you're gonna do is go in and give it a top stitch along the upper edge because that upper edge is not gonna get sewn down. Um, when this Y piece goes on, it's almost like a pocket that the ear piece can fit inside. So you wanna finish off that top edge first. Then, you're gonna match up the top edge to the seam that you just sewed in. And again, if you go back to the pattern and look at the placement lines, you can see how everything fits together. So what you wanna do is line up the front edge or the back edge, depending on which side you're starting from. Get it down there, and then just edge stitch all the way along that bottom edge down the side, matching up your points to the seam at the lower side, and just go all the way around it. Now, so you can see you've got your piece sewn down, you've got that little pocket formed at the top, and everything's lined up at the front and the side back. So now it's time to put the back together. And I like to go ahead and do the zipper first and the top of the center back, um, just because I think it's easier than having it sewn in uh, to the rest of the cowl ahead of time. So I'm just marking where my zipper's gonna go. And then going from that point, 
and I'm sewing up the center back, which also goes across the top of the head, all the way up to that edge that's gonna end up becoming the forehead. Then I'm gonna inset my zipper. I'm gonna use a cording foot to do that so that I can get right up against the zipper teeth. And then I'm gonna start from what would be the bottom stop of the zipper, which is actually on our piece, the top. I'm gonna place that stop right up against where I stopped my stitching. And then I'm gonna get my cording foot right up against it so that I'm maintaining my half inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna sew right along those zipper teeth all the way down. Now if your zipper isn't exactly the right length or the same length, it's okay if it's too long because you can always trim off the ends and um, they'll get fixed when you bind off the bottom edge. So if you have a really long zipper, don't worry about it. It's more important about the top stop than anything else. So once you're done with that side, then zip the zipper closed, match up the bottom edges of the piece so that it comes out lined up, and then go back up the other side, maintaining that half inch seam allowance. And you might need to uh, ease around the curves a little bit, but that's not too difficult. It might just take a little practice. Until you're all the way back up to the top. <clears throat> then open the piece flat, and you're gonna go back along on the outside. You're gonna fold it down and stitch it in. To finish off setting the zipper. And on this piece, I went ahead and did this top stitching all the way up to the forehead. So I just did it in two lines on either side of that seam. All right, so once the zipper's in and done, it's time to put the back onto the rest of the hood. So with the bottom facing down and the side up on the top, because it's easier to, to ease the, the curves in this way, I'm just gonna line it all up, line up that top edge. And here, if you wanna use pins or little tiny clips, you can certainly do that if it's easier. And then you're just gonna sew all the way from that bottom edge being sure that you're catching the back allowance of that Y-shaped piece in there. And just ease the curves together. trim out that excess material. And here we're trimming it towards the back. And then this can be a little bit fiddly, but if you unzip it, you can, uh, you can get through there. So next what we're doing is we're gonna bind off the face hole. So I've got a two inch strip of my Ponte de Roma here. And what I'm doing is I'm, with the hood inside out, I'm starting at the top of the forehead and I'm giving it a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just sewing this strip of ponte around here, um, easing it into the curves and the corners at the bottom of the chin. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna just wrap it around to the back And then 
make sure I've got it wrapped nice and tightly around there. I'm just going to go back along it and I'm going to sew right up against it. Once that's done, it's time to do the bottom edge. And for the bottom edge, what you want to do is you want to extend your strip a little bit past the zipper so that you can then fold it over and create an enclosure for the bottom of the zipper. And if you've had to cut off the zipper at the bottom edge, this will keep the, uh, the zipper foot from coming off the ends because you're going to completely enclose the bottom of the zipper inside the binding. So with that done, you're going to fold it down, then wrap it around the whole zipper and everything, and then fold it up to create a little enclosed pocket. And then just like before, just wrap it to the back and stitch right up against it, which is called stitching in the ditch, incidentally. It means you are stitching right on top of a previous seam so that your top stitching doesn't show. Then once you've got your binding sewn down to both the base and the bottom edge, you're just gonna go in and neatly trim it up. And then when you zip it up, there is your finished cowl. Face is all done, bottom edge is all done, and he's ready to go. So here's what it looks like when it's completed. Here's the cowl by itself, and then I've also put in some pictures of it with a helmet. And this helmet was made by Jordan's Ironic Armory, and incidentally the cowl pattern here was made specifically to go with that helmet. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, for more information, more walkthroughs, and uh, to visit the shop, go to smpdesigns.com. Thanks, and I will see you next time.